I'm Ray Vieta, and this is Central Florida's True Crime Files, where I dig into unsolved cases throughout our area. Sometimes the victim is known, other times it's a mystery. That's the situation with this crime file out of Orange County. A woman was discovered back in 1984. Right now she's a Jane Doe, but investigators are hoping their work in the labs can change that. About 275 yards west of this intersection and 20 feet into the north. Just past the corner of Frank Street in Liberty in Orange County is the site of a nearly 40-year-old murder mystery. The residents smell the foul odor. On November 9th, 1984, a teenager and his parents called 911. A stench caught their attention, and when the teen took a closer look, he realized it was coming from a body. How badly decomposed was she at the time? Um, she was still recognizable in terms of they were able to determine that it was a female. But they couldn't figure out much more. She was a black woman. Investigators believe she was shot, then most likely dumped here. Her name? For now, it's Jane Doe. She had no identification on her, but with the help of DNA, Orange County's cold case team hopes they'll be able to identify her. They're using DNA from clothing and her body. There was some clothing that was with her. There's a jacket. That jacket was taken to the lab where forensic biologists use this device, a type of vacuum called an MVAC. It simultaneously does a rinse solution while it vacuums up any embedded DNA that may be left over on the material. We can get wearer DNA off of that. Fox 35 taking you behind the scenes of this cold case to get a closer look at the technology. And it releases the rinse solution while it vacuums and you run over it a few times. The goal of the device is to get as much DNA as possible from the inside of the clothing. That DNA is then sent to another lab to be analyzed. This case among the many files Corporal Nutting is looking into. He heads up the cold case team at the Orange County Sheriff's Office. So we go from 1941, which is our oldest cold case, uh, up until you know, it goes down and then back into the 2000s. The team uploads the DNA into genealogy databases. From there, they track down distant relatives. And then detectives from Orange County have been traveling as far away as New York, talking to family members who've been identified through genealogy databases, conducting, getting DNA from the family members through swabs, and then submitting those into the database to try and f figure out who the victim is. A decades-old murder mystery coming down to strands of genetic material, physically microscopic, figuratively huge in determining who this woman was and how she ended up here. So you feel confident you'll be able to figure out the identity of this person? Yes, 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 I think so. And we've already identified some family members. The next steps involve using the woman's DNA. The cold case team is hoping to establish a family tree in order to narrow in on who she was. So I traveled to Broward County, Florida, where a piece of that woman's remains were analyzed, bringing investigators closer to an identity. A tooth, that's what could help investigators crack a nearly 40-year-old murder mystery. The mystery, who is Jane Doe? We're looking at 38 years. Uh, DNA was in its extreme infancy. The Orange County Sheriff's cold case team is working on the case now. The woman was found murdered in November of 1984. Her body was bound, wrapped in a jacket on a dirt road near Colonial Drive. From that body, a tooth was extracted, sent to DNA Labs International in South Florida. What we do is we kind of drill into that tooth and we don't want to get any of the enamel. So we drill it and we get out this really fine powder and that's what goes into a tube. That's where we suited up to get an exclusive behind the scenes look at the technology being used right now. So this is a special hood that we use. Um, it's able to um, collect all the bone dust. This is the chamber for it. So you hear that? That's the ball moving around. And that cup goes into this instrument right here. That machine will shake it back and forth really, really fast and that ball will collide with the bone and break it up into tiny, tiny little pieces. And that's where you get the DNA. And that's where we get the DNA from, exactly. Once they get that material, this machine deciphers it all. It's reading the DNA. So this is a machine that essentially helps you figure out who Jane Doe is. Correct. That DNA profile was then sent to forensic investigator Ryan Backman. He specializes in cold cases just like this one. We upload that to a public database that uh, allows us to compare 
the, the genetic markers in that profile to anybody that has already publicly uploaded their own DNA to that same public database. Those databases are filled with profiles uploaded by people voluntarily. You know the DNA kits that tell you where you come from? The companies give you a detailed report you can upload to gedmatch.com and or familytreedna.com. Oh, you might find a, a distant third cousin, second cousin, first cousin that you haven't ever met before. Or in this case, a relative you never knew you had. When we uploaded this profile, we were way off in the uh, third and fourth cousin range. We've been able to, to select a few promising uh, genetic lines uh, in a family tree. Detectives traveled to different parts of Florida and even to New York trying to get volunteer DNA samples from those distant relatives. And the idea ultimately will be that one of these tests will will generate an even closer genetic match to our unknown victim. Modern technology helping investigators narrow in on a decades old Jane Doe mystery. We're very confident that we can identify this person, but it still is a lot of hard work ahead. This is her face, the clothes she was wearing, including what appeared to be a concert shirt. These are all clues that could help identify Jane Doe, who was found back in 1984. New facial reconstruction could be the key. This is the face of a nearly 40 year mystery. Someone's daughter, possibly someone's mother or sister. For Orange County investigators, she's been Jane Doe since November of 1984. How badly decomposed was she at the time? Um, she was still recognizable in terms of they were able to determine that it was a female. A team found her body on the side of a dirt road in Eastern Orange County. We started following her case this spring. The Orange County Sheriff's cold case team picked up the case in the last couple of years. We're very confident that we can identify this person, but it still is a lot of hard work ahead. And so Fox 35 followed along, crisscrossing the state from the dirt road to the sheriff's labs to South Florida. It's there a tooth from this Jane Doe provided investigators with a DNA profile. So this is a special hood that we use. Um, it's able to um, collect all the bone dust. This is the chamber for it. So you hear that? That's the ball moving around. And that cup goes into this instrument right here. That machine will shake it back and forth really, really fast and that ball will collide with the bone and break it up into tiny, tiny little pieces. And that's where you get the DNA. And that's where we get the DNA from, exactly. That DNA profile was sent to a genealogist who helped investigators track down distant relatives. When we uploaded this profile, we were way off in the uh, third and fourth cousin range. We've been able to select a few promising uh, genetic lines uh, in a family tree. And now in the last 72 hours, a forensic anthropologist was able to put together an image. Our first look at this victim, a younger black woman in an orange jacket, jeans, and a t-shirt. What was very helpful though was the original crime scene photos had pictures of hair, her hair. And so that's great because if we can incorporate that, it's much more realistic than in some cases we don't have that. The anthropology lab is in the basement of a building at the University of South Florida in Tampa. Dr. Aaron Kimmerly runs it. Pictures and clay models fill the walls and the shelves. Faces of the unknown, some her team helped identify. For me, this is, you know, a, a challenge and a, it's sort of like putting a puzzle together, but the reward is so much greater because it's helping families of missing people find their loved one. Her work on this Orange County victim started when the medical examiner sent her the victim's skull. What we do is um, take this skull, we put tissue depth markers, which are basically little erasers, on known landmarks of the skull, and that reflects the, the depth or how, you know, how much fat and skin and muscle you have on your cheeks, your chin. And then we scan this and digitally draw a face over the skull. This digital rendering, now the face of an Orange County Jane Doe, one step closer to identifying the unidentified, providing a face, but not a name, yet. The more people that see it is what's important to get someone to come forward. So it's like a million people can see it, but you just need the right person to see it. You just need one person. Remember that family tree I mentioned before? Investigators will now show this picture to distant relatives they've been able to track down. Now, this is just one of the many cold cases I dug through. Visit fox35orlando.com and click on Central Florida's True Crime Files to see some of the others. I'm Ray Vieta. Thank you so much for watching.